everybody, it's Hannah from Story Kids. Welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. And a welcome especially to the second installment of Dr. Seuss Saturday. If you were here last Dr. Seuss Saturday and Dr. Seuss Sunday, we read Hop on Pop and then we read Green Eggs and Ham. Uh, and you can find The Cat in the Hat and One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish back in this channel, back in the playlist, right down below this video along with lots of our other videos. Yesterday we read some poems from Where the Sidewalk Ends and we read lots of other amazing stories before that. You might notice that I'm back in my indoor location as I have been the past couple days because it was raining today so I can't sit outside. But that will not get in the way of a great story. I have this really cool collection of Dr. Seuss stories and today we're going to read the first story in the collection. The collection is called Yertle the Turtle and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss, of course. And today we are going to be reading Yertle the Turtle, the title story. Shall we begin? I think we should. Here we go. Here's some cover art. We talked about, we talk about artists a lot. Uh, in this series because remember that what makes a story is both the words and the art. Dr. Seuss has a really cool and I think really recognizable um, art style. It's the characters you know have big eyes kind of pointy faces and it's very much just like one color so it's like just blue or just red or things like that. It's not like shading and blending and all those things and also every story kind of has a color scheme which I think is pretty cool. Alright, shall we start? Here is Yertle the Turtle. And remember, look out for your rhymes as we read this Dr. Seuss book. On the faraway island of Salamassand, Yertle the Turtle was king of the pond. A nice little pond. It was clean. It was neat. The water was warm. There was plenty to eat. The turtles had everything turtles might need, and they were all happy. Quite happy indeed. Sounds like a good life so far. They were, until Yertle, the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. I'm ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see, but I don't see enough. That's the trouble with me. With this stone for a throne, I look down on my pond, but I cannot look down on the places beyond. This throne that I sit on is too, too low down. It ought to be higher, he said with a frown. If I could sit high, how much greater I'd be. What a king, I'd be ruler of all I could see. So, Yertle is ruler of everything that he can see, but he wants to see more so that he can rule more. So, Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand and Yertle the Turtle King, King gave a command. He ordered nine turtles to swim to his stone and using these turtles, he built a new throne. He made each turtle stand on one another's back and he piled them all up in a nine turtle stack. And then Yertle climbed up. He sat down on the pile. What a wonderful view. He could see most a mile. Those other turtles don't look so happy, huh? All mine, Yertle cried. Oh, the things I now rule. I'm king of a cow and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a horse, and what's more, beyond that, I'm king of a blueberry bush and a cat. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. He sure rules a lot of things, huh? Yeah. And all through that morning, he sat there a pie, saying over and over, A great king am I, until long about noon. Then he heard a faint sigh. 
towards that, snapped the king, and he looked down the stack, and he saw, at the bottom, a turtle named Mac. Just a part of his throne, and this plain little turtle looked up and he said, Beg your pardon, King Yertle. I have pains in my back and my shoulders and knees. How much long must we stand here, your majesty? Please. What do you think Yertle's going to say? The king of the turtles barked back. I'm king, and you're only a turtle named Mac. You stay in your place while I sit here and rule. I'm king of a cow, and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a horse, and a bush, and a cat. But that isn't all. I'll do better than that. My throne shall be higher, his royal voice thundered. So pile up more turtles. I want about two hundred. That's a lot of turtles. Turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and brayed, and the turtles way down in the pond were afraid. They trembled, they shook, but they came, they obeyed. From all over the pond, they came swimming by dozens, whole families of turtles with uncles and cousins, and all of them stepped on the head of poor Mac, one after another, they climbed up the stack. Mac has a lot of turtles on top of him, doesn't he? Then, Yertle the turtle was perched up so high he could see 40 miles from his throne in the sky. Hooray, shouted Yertle. I'm king of the trees. I'm king of the birds. And I'm king of the bees. I'm king of the butterflies. King of the air. Ah, me. What a throne. What a marvelous chair. I'm Yertle the turtle. Oh, marvelous me. For I am the ruler of all that I see. Hold on a second. What? My headband keeps getting in the way of my reading, doesn't it? Sorry about that. Then again, from below, in the great heavy sack, stack, came a groan from that plain little turtle named Mac. Your Majesty, please, I, I don't like to complain, but down here below we are feeling great pain. I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down at the bottom, we too should have rights. We turtles can't stand it. Our shells will all crack. Besides, we need food. We are starving, groaned Mac. Maybe I should have said it like, we are starving, groaned Mac. There we go. Shut your mouth, howled the mighty King Yertle. You've no right to talk to the world's highest turtle. I rule from the clouds, over land, over sea. There's nothing, no, nothing that's higher than me. There are some dogs barking outside. Do you hear them? Maybe they're friends of Yertle's. But while he was shouting, he saw with surprise that the moon of the evening was starting to rise up over his head in the darkening skies. What's that? snorted Yertle. Say, what is that thing that dares to be higher than Yertle the king? I shall not allow it. I'll go higher still. I'll build my throne higher. I can and I will. 
I'll call some more turtles. I'll stack them to heaven. I need about 5,607. But, as Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand and started to order and give the command, that plain little turtle below in the stack, that plain little turtle whose name was just Mac, decided he'd taken enough, and he had. And that plain little lad got a little bit mad. And that plain little Mac did a plain little thing. He burped. And that burp shook the throne of the king. Uh-oh. And Yertle the turtle, the king of the trees, the king of the air and the birds and the bees, the king of a house and a cow and a mule, well, that was the end of the Turtle King's rule. For Yertle, the king of all solemn Assad, fell off his high throne and fell plunk in the pond. Oh my goodness. What a fall for Yertle, huh? And today, the great Yertle, the marvelous he, is king of the mud. That is all he can see. And the turtles, of course, all the turtles are free as turtles and maybe all creatures should be. The end. Yes, that's the end. So, that was your... Don't pay attention to the other stories part. We're not reading any of those today. Also, don't pay attention. We got this at Barnes & Noble. So, I hope you liked Yertle the Turtle. I got distracted by that price tag. Sorry about that. What can we learn from Yertle? Hmm. Well, first of all, Yertle was very greedy. Hmm. And a little bit power hungry, too, maybe. And, uh, you know, he was never satisfied. He kept wanting more and more and more, and he got it. But eventually, you know, there's nothing more to get. And when he still wanted more than that, then he came tumbling down, and then he had absolutely nothing. He was even worse than when he started. So, excuse me, maybe he teaches us to uh, be satisfied with what we have. But I think another important lesson that we can learn from Yertle is the one of Mac the turtle, who, you know, was this, this little nothing turtle, we say. And Yertle got very mad at him because he wasn't obeying the king. And Yertle thought he was super duper powerful, right? But Mac made a change. And because of that, Yertle, who, let's admit it was not the best king, he fell off his throne both literally and also figuratively, he wasn't the king anymore. And all the turtles were free and they were equal and they had rights. Just like Mac says, don't we all deserve rights? So Mac did his part to change something that he thought was wrong. And because of that, all the turtles became free because the turtles and the creatures, as Dr. Seuss mentioned, all have the right to be free and to be equal and to be treated with respect and with rights and liberties and freedom and equality that all of us deserve to have. So, I hope you enjoyed Yertle the Turtle. Come back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Sunday here on Story Kids. Until next time, I'm Hannah from Story Kids. Keep on reading, everybody. Bye-bye.